Hello, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and today we're going to talk about laws of exponents. We're going to do uh, some laws. We're going to do six laws. I'm going to illustrate with examples, and then at the end we will do um, some examples where we're doing a variety of, of using the different laws. So to start with, let me explain um, the whole idea of a power. If you have a base raised to an exponent, that's called a power. So the whole thing is called a power, this is called the base, and this is called the exponent. So for example, if I had four squared, this whole thing is a power, this is my base, and that's my exponent. And we're often going to encounter situations where we need to simplify and combine things using these various rules. So, let's start with the first rule. A lot of textbooks like using X and Y all of the time for their variables, and I like to change it up using different letters because in the, in the real world, in a lot of the formulas that you'll see in the different applications, they're not using X's and Y's. So I want you to get comfortable regardless of whatever letter I have to put. I could put a Greek symbol there, I could put an X, I can put an A, I can put a T, I can put any variable and you shouldn't be intimidated by it. It just all means the same thing. So if I had A to the M times A to the N, what you need to do, because the bases are the same, I'm allowed to combine those and then you simply add the exponents. Let's look at an example. I'll, I'll use variables, let's say I had t to the fifth times t cubed. That would be t to the five plus three, which is t to the eighth. I could illustrate why that's true in this example. I'm probably not gonna do it with all the examples because it's the same idea. But what t to the fifth means is t times itself five times. So if I take t to the fifth, which is this, and I multiply by t cubed, t cubed means t multiplied to itself three times. That's basically what I'm doing. This is an abbreviated way of writing t multiplied to itself five times. This is an abbreviated way of writing t multiplied to itself three times. And then if I took all of this, I have a total of t being multiplied to itself eight times. So hopefully that helps you understand why you are adding those exponents. All right, rule number two tells us what to do when we're dividing powers that have the same base. So if I have a to the m divided by a to the n, I have two results depending on whether m is larger or smaller than n. So the first rule I'm going to give you is if m is larger then we subtract um, the exponents m minus n. So our result will be the same base to the exponent m minus n. Understand that a cannot equal zero. You can never have a denominator equal to zero, it's an undefined. So as long as a is not zero, this rule works. So for example, if I had b to the fifth power, divided by b to the power of three. And you don't have to write this out when you're actually doing this, I'm just showing you. The result will be b to the five minus three, which is b squared. And again, I could put out my five b's, divide by the three b's, and the three of the b's will cancel and you'll be left with two b's in the numerator. So that's just an illustration of that rule. If this number is larger than m and you follow this rule you're going to get into negative exponents and often you don't want to be having negative exponents so we will talk about negative exponents in the next video but for this video I want to show you how you can do this when n is larger than m. I'll keep that rule up there. 
So there's sort of two parts to this rule. So if m is, sorry, if n is larger than m, the result is gonna be one over a to the, and now I subtract m from n. So for example, if I have uh, z to the power of four divided by z to the power of seven, because seven is larger than four, my result will be one over z to the power of seven minus four, which is three. All right, my next rule uh, tells us how to deal when, with a power raised to another exponent. So if I have a to the m raised to the n power, our rule is we multiply our exponents, okay? I can show you that. If I had, for example, t squared raised to the power of three, that means t squared times itself three times. And now we've um, changed it to a multiplication, which uh, it tells us that we can add our exponents according to rule number one. So it'll be t to the two plus two plus two, which is six. So you see that it works when I multiply those. Don't add, multiply. Our next rule uh, deals with a product raised to an exponent. So for example, if I have a times b and I raise that to an exponent, any exponent n, I'm allowed to apply that exponent to each of those factors. So this will be a to the n times b to the n. If you see a, a minus or a plus operation here, you can't do this. <laughs> this only works if these two things are multiplied. If they're added or subtracted, this is not gonna work. So just remember that it only works if these are, they're called factors when they're multiplied. Um, when they're added or subtracted together, they're called terms. So let's take a look, uh, an look at an example of this. If I had three, um, N, no, sorry. So if I had a number with a letter, it, it, you know, you could have different letters, you could have a number with a letter. They're, the key is they have to be multiplied. You can apply that exponent to each factor. Now you could um, simplify this so that it's not written as an exponent. So that would be 64 z cubed. Or you can leave it in this form. It depends what you're going to be doing with your result. All right, we also have a rule for a quotient that has an exponent applied to it. I'll make a note. Our denominator cannot equal zero. And in this case, uh, the rule says that we can apply that exponent to the numerator and to the denominator. So it will be equal to a to the n divided by b to the n. And if we want to take a look at an example of that, we could have, again, numbers or letters. Um, if I had a over b power of 3, that's going to be a cubed 
over B cubed. And, and why this is going to be important is you, it will allow you to separate these things to do further simpl simplifications later on. So you want to get rid of these brackets, separate the A from the B. You still have your division, but now that's a factor by itself, that's a factor. Now the last rule I want to talk about in this particular video is what is a base raised to the power of zero. It's kind of an interesting one. It's equal to one as long as a does not equal zero. And I'm going to show you why that works because it's, it's, it's sort of hard to understand why does something to the power of zero equal one. And I think maybe the easiest way of doing that is if I had x to the fifth divided by x to the fifth. We know that anything divided by itself is equal to one. So we know that's equal to one, but let's go back to rule number two that says this is also equal to x to the five minus five. And that's gonna be x to the zero. And because we know this quotient is equal to one, this sort of illustrates, this is not a proof, but it is a fairly simple illustration of why that works. And another example, I could have all sorts of things raised to the power of zero. So let's say I have three uh, t squared v cubed w to the fifth power. If I have that whole thing raised to the power of zero, it doesn't matter, it's equal to one. All right, let's take a look at some examples now where we have a combination, because these rules don't exist by themselves. They're often mixed in with other rules, and we need to be able to simplify when, we have, when we're working with exponents to do a variety of things. So let's just now, we've taken six rules. Let's take a look at some examples, and then we'll be done. Okay. All right, let's try some examples where com we're combining uh, more than one rule. And we'll start with this first one. So it looks like a lot going on, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna deal with the brackets first. And we're just gonna leave this C cubed D there. And what I can do here, remember when I have a product and it's raised to an exponent, I can apply that um, exponent to each factor. So I'm just gonna do it step by step. So I took the c squared and raised it to the power of 4. I took the d cubed and I raised it to the power of 4. Now I'm going to simplify those. So c squared to the power of 4, remember I multiply. So that'll be c to the 8th. d cubed to the power of 4, remember I multiply. So that'll be d to the 12th. And I'm not done. You're not done simplifying when you still have rules that you can apply. So I have c cubed times c to the eighth. I'm just changing the order. When you're multiplying, you can multiply uh, factors in any order, d times d to the 12th. So I'm gonna combine these because I'm multiplying powers that have the same base, I add the exponents. So that will be c to the 11th, and this will be d to the, now I haven't talked about this yet, but when there's no exponent there, it, it's just an exponent of one. It just means it's d raised to the power of one. It's only d once. So d to the power of one times d to the power of 12 will be d to the power of 13. And this is our simplified result. All right, let's look at the next example. What I'm gonna do first here is break this up. So I'm going to have three p squared. So the numerator is cubed and the denominator is cubed. Then I'm going to, um, you know what, I'm gonna need more room here, <laughs> sorry. Then I'm going to apply this power to each factor. So this will be three cubed, and then P squared cubed, two cubed, and q cubed q. 
you don't have to take as many steps as I'm taking. So I'm running out of room, so let's just pretend I'm still going down here. Three cubed is 27. P squared and then cubed, I multiply my exponent, so that's P to the sixth. Two cubed is eight. Q cubed, <laughs> cubed, we multiply our exponents, it would be Q to the ninth, so there's our final result. All right, our next example is something that you might encounter. And what I wanna do is sort of treat these separate. It's all multiplication, but um, we can break it up and it's still correct. So if I broke that up and just put a multi you know, thought of that as multiplication, it's still gonna work. So I'm going to deal with the M's. Six is greater than four, so my M power stays in the numerator. So that'll be m to the 6 minus 4. And I'll write that out just so I don't lose anybody. Now, I've got n cubed divided by n to the 8th. Because this number is larger, my, my power that has n in it as a base is going to stay in the denominator. So that's going to be n to the, and I'm going to subtract 8 minus 3. So the final result will be m to the 2 divided by, well, that's an 8, n to the fifth. And that's my final result. That's my simplification of that. And my last example I wanted to throw in here to see if you're paying attention. We have a plus b squared. I don't know how many times I have seen students that know better make this mistake. And I've seen them in calculus make this mistake. So people forget. We, we remember those rules and we, they look familiar and we just have, we just forget. And they might not do it with an example like this, but it might be a little bit more complicated, but they still make that mistake. Can I apply this power to each of these? No, I cannot. Why? Because there's an addition sign which turns these into terms, and we cannot apply a power to terms like that. What can we do? We can leave it like that, or we can express it as a plus b times a plus b. That's what it means. It means this times itself two times. So we probably want to leave it in this form, but remember, don't apply that power to your terms. All right, so this is it for uh, the first video I'm doing on law, uh, laws of exponents. I'm gonna do another one where we get into fractional and negative exponents. So when you're ready, after you've done some practice using these rules, join me on the next video. Take care.